It's Wednesday and welcome Yay. to another session of uh, the web web chat at stormasia.com. I'm uh, Kanan Chandran, the publisher of stormasia.com and this is a regular series of discussions we have on mm. various topics, right? So we've covered yeah. a number of things ranging mm. from stress during COVID to business mm. opportunities, uh, yeah. pet training at one stage and uh, all sorts of issues. So mm. today, uh, with everybody sort of sitting and wondering what's going on, what's going to take place down the line, yeah. I thought it'd be good to get uh, different people to come in and have a chat about the things that they have started up. Mm. We've got... Uh, a musician, a guitarist, uh, somebody who makes uh, jewelry, and somebody who makes dog food. So it's kind of a mix of uh, things that are uh, that's uh, taking place in today's discussion. But the main thing here is how they've developed the concept. What brought about that idea to develop this particular thing that they've gone down, uh, gone into, uh, and how do they intend to bring it to fruition, and where do they see it going? So essentially, it's looking at the business. <coughs> Uh, behind what we're doing, including mm -hmm. some of the reasons for having that. Mm -hmm. So today's panelists, uh, we mm -hmm. have Eddie Rasidi, also known as Eddie Cradle to many. Yay! Uh, Hello! <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome, Eddie. You, you started Thank you, sir. at 10, and then you were performing soon after, yeah. you know, kind of like the many of the usual yeah. routes at that time, right? The Correct. Many weddings Correct. Yes, and, yes. Uh, yeah. your first band. Yeah. And then uh, right. you also started yeah. writing a lot of your own stuff. You formed your own band, uh, Cradle, yes. in 1994. Yeah. Yes, uh, And yeah. then you toured mm. with that. Um, yeah. And Eddie's mm. released a lot of albums, uh, yeah. critical acclaim. Mm. Uh, mm. I caught you in concert recently. Yeah. Uh, thank stuff. you. Very short, uh, very short. Thank you. Yeah, this <laughs> <laughs> uh, But all that aside, he, he mm. wanted to create a guitar for himself. Well, creating music yeah. is one thing, right? But you also right. wanted to a guitar specific to your needs. Yeah. So you're working with uh, Emiya uh, to, right. to, to create your Eden range of guitars. Yes. So correct. we'll talk yeah. about that in a while. But okay, thanks sure. for being on this uh, session. No, my today. pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. We've also got okay. uh, Tang Guan Wei. Um, and together with fellow grads, uh, Ng Ying Chong and Vivian Pu, uh, they started uh, a company called Luna. Uh, which makes engagement rings, right? And instead of using diamonds, which are, which my generation probably feels mm. is important, uh, Guanwei's generation feels no, 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 none mm. of that conflict stuff. So he's mm. gone for Mazanat. Got Vinny Tan, a dog lover. Uh, and he, mm. she wanted to ensure her dogs were well fed. Mm -hmm. So she's a recent postgraduate with a Master of Science in Marketing and Consumer Psychology. Wow. Uh, and she works for an MNC. Uh, but she, she wanted to apply her entrepreneurial instincts uh, in products and services for dogs. Uh, and she's been attending dog handling courses as part of that mm -hmm. as well. And she's in the midst of forming uh, Sophie's Studios. So what sparked the idea, you know, uh, to... to to do this business. Let's have a deal, Winnie. Oh, um, for me, it's actually my dog. So Teddy and Xiao Pai, whereby you can see the both of them on my background as well. Um, so I realized that when I started training them, giving them treats is actually something that motivates to, for them to do something that we, we want them to do, right? So usually when I use the commercial treats, like roughly around 100 grams of treats, I can finish it within one session of training with them. And it's quite expensive. So the usual ones that I buy, it's around like $10 a pack for 100 grams already. And there's a lot of chemicals inside. There's close, very little nutritional values for the dogs as well. Mm -hmm. And treats in general are just really expensive. So they range between like $4, $4 to like $40 over dollars. And some of them are just like 200 grams that can cost you quite a bit of money. So my dogs are big dogs as well, and, and I want the best for them. And also, if I want to get a, like a natural chew, like a bully stick, um, the usual price is between like 50 to 60 or even higher. So it's, it's quite expensive in the long term. So I thought to come out with something that it's more affordable and also better for the health of the dogs and like cats and whichever animals that we can feed to. Okay, cool. So it, uh, it applies across the whole animal range, not just dogs, not specific to dogs? Um, it, like certain supplements that I, I, I create, yes, it applies to cats and um, other, other animals as well. But there are, the main focus is mainly on dogs. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, so uh, Guanwei, what's with the engagement rings? Yeah, so... I 
like it started last year when I I saw this company in the US selling um, Monzonite engagement rings. I thought, hey, what what a cool idea. Um, but no, I always thought like diamonds were pretty much very dirty, right? And the, the beer's foundation holds a monopoly on everything. And also the conflict nature of diamonds has always been uh, a, a thorn on the diamond side, right? So a couple of these facts um, coupled together, I thought, hey, it's quite an interesting opportunity. Let me ask my friends, see whether what they think about diamonds. And upon like talking to a lot of them, um, I realized like millennials or people my age, Gen Z years, millennials, they find that diamonds are not as appealing as maybe probably your generation because uh, they are very open to our diamond alternatives. So with that, uh, I immediately decided to, hey, why not just start something up, find a couple of friends. And I immediately thought of Vivian because she was, uh, she did her own artisanal jewelry shop as well. Well, she sold a lot of it before. She's very handy. And so I, I decided to bring her on. And also Ying Zong, who is working for a marketing agency. So he's very good in the branding growth side. And we, we all three of us, we decided to go in together and just started out like this year, I believe about April. We decided to launch something while we're still in school. And you know, two, three months later, we just launched a website. So it's quite an interesting journey. So Eddie, let's, yes. let's hear uh, about, uh, I mean, we know creating music yeah. is one thing, yeah. we've been doing that yeah. for a long right. time, yeah. but a guitar, I mean, why? Yeah, it's basically, it all started when, you know, like um, as as players, we, we do have our own needs, uh, specific needs, you know, everybody is uh, uh, built differently. So I, I, I was just thinking about like, uh, how do we uh, fit into that uh, where, you know, like, um, we have um, guys who are smaller size and uh, shorter fingers and all those things that comes to mind. So I was just playing around with the idea that hey, maybe we can um, do a customized guitar for, for, for the customers. Huh? Meaning to say, everybody is built different. So uh, you give us your specs, we take uh, some kind of measurement that is made uh, for you comfortably. Uh, to fit in your own uh, playing style. And um, I'm just lucky that uh, while talking about this kind of ideas, I met uh, Mr. Ismail from uh, Emiya Guitars. So um, we work closely with um, a factory in Bandung in uh, um, Indonesia. That's where we get all our uh, uh, natural uh, like woods and uh, parts. And the best part is we can get it at a very good price. If it's a custom guitar for... For, for an international brand, it will cost you like maybe six, seven thousand. But with us, with Emia, you can get it maybe below two thousand dollars. And if the specs are simple enough, it can go even uh, to a thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah, for a custom built guitar. <clears throat> of course, previously we have done this uh, for others, but uh, for me, it, it took, took, took me a while to actually, uh, okay, I want to try this. And uh, while talking about this, we, we come up with a plan where it can be a, a, what do you call that, like a production line. And based on the Eden model, we, we would like to, uh, you know, like, okay, you have um, example, Mr. Ali. Oh, Ali likes uh, Eden, but he wants to change this and that here and there, uh, different sets of uh, uh, hardware, gold color, mm -hmm. silver color, anything can be done. So you can personalize yeah. it. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And a good price yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And how long does it yeah. take to get a guitar done? Uh, it, roughly depending on how intricate or how um, uh, complex complex the guys the, the the customer wants it to be, it can be from as short as three months to six months. So how has COVID and the impact on supply chains and and logistics mm -hmm. uh, affected mm -hmm. your plans? For us, um, so, uh, sourcing for the Monzonite itself was uh, quite a big issue. And I think the bigger issue was also um, the co-founders, the three of us, uh, all of us, we couldn't meet up you know, because, because of COVID, because we wanted to be safe, right? So there's a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot more mm -hmm. uh, online meetings. You know, sometimes it's better to do things face to face. And mm -hmm. also sourcing for the jeweler was mm -hmm. quite a big issue, especially in Singapore. Um, we wanted everything to be made in Singapore because uh, we feel that, hey, we want to support the local industry as well, right? 
the because of the Singapore industry, a lot of the jewelers are retiring. A lot of them are getting older in age. Um, all these artisanal jewelers are about like 50, 60 years old. Mm -hmm. So Sorry. trying to source for them or trying to make them get comfortable with something like e-commerce or mm -hmm. partnering with us was quite a challenge as well. So we managed to find um, this uh, one amazing jeweler who's like, working for 40 years in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he was one of the pioneers in the industry mm -hmm. as well. But that's the that's the brilliant part about doing things locally as well because we can do things uh, a lot faster than I would say other e-commerce brands or other jewelers mm -hmm. out there. Uh, sometimes they take maybe like one month or two months to, to for your ring to uh, to be shipped to you. We can do it in like two weeks. So uh, I think it's a win-win for like the local industry mm -hmm. and also us. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so with the with the rings, maybe if you might just want to explain very quickly what monzonite is. Monzonite is a diamond alternative. So it's mm -hmm. um it's silicon carbonite. So diamonds are pure carbon. carbon. Mm -hmm. This is silicon mm -hmm. and carbon uh, in a chemical structure. So it's mm -hmm. uh it's extremely similar to diamonds. You cannot tell the difference between monzonite mm -hmm. and diamonds through naked eyes. So if you mm -hmm. look at two things. It look exactly identical. Whenever people buy diamond alternatives, for example, like a uh, cubic zirconia, that, that's the most famous one out there. Zirconia, um, yeah. It's, yeah, it's not as hard, so uh -uh. it doesn't last super long, and it's so mm. tarnishes. So eventually, you get cloudy. Uh, mm. So those are the properties for um, cubic zirconia. That's why mm. some people don't like to buy it. Uh, but for mm. monzonite, because it, it its chemical structure is very uh, hard, it's mm. about a nine point two five in the most scale, which is the second hardest mm -hmm. gem in the world. Basically, it will last forever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't crack, it doesn't oh. uh, discolor, it doesn't get cloudy. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. why we went Monsonite. And the best part is also about price. It's only one-tenth the price of a normal diamond. Wow. Oh. Yeah, that's exactly. Cool, so cool, cool. Like, one carat diamond is like one thousand, like $10,000. Yeah, this yeah. will be like $1,000. When, when, you, when you mentioned uh, the cloudy part, right? Yeah. What, what does that mean? Other diamond alternatives, right? Uh. Sometimes the, the gem itself yeah. it gets cloudy because of like oxygenation and oh, all the soap okay, you put okay. in. So okay. it's, when you see diamond, it's like very clear and you can see through yes, the whole thing. Correct. But yeah, so mosaic and diamond doesn't get cloudy, but then like okay. something like cubic zirconia will get cloudy. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Cool, yeah. cool, cool, okay. cool, cool, cool. So Vinny, what any challenges that you uh -huh. faced? Um, for me, it would be actually getting the spires as well at so like the correct sources of ingredients. So usually whenever um, dog parents, they buy, they buy items for the dogs, they would either mm -hmm. prefer it either from the US or from Australia or New Zealand itself. Mm -hmm. So not being able to go, go over to actually mm -hmm. see how everything is, it's an issue for me because um, I want to do something that it's very trustworthy so that mm -hmm. when dog parents or like pet parents, they buy it, they don't have to mm -hmm. worry about is it um is it ethnically farmed mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. is there any issues with all these mm -hmm. meat mm -hmm. or like is it dead meat before that or mm -hmm. do they like kill in a really humane way because that's mm -hmm. a really big thing for me as well. Sure, so sure. um then other challenges would be um mm -hmm. anyone can actually start an e-commerce store really easily right now. There's so many players out there and how how am I gonna like differentiate from everyone else? Then there's the other competition with the bigger brands as well. So mm -hmm. like the big bigger pet um, pet supply players, they are able to price slash to a really, really cheap rate. So mm -hmm. then, yes, they do not have nutrients inside, but they can market it in a different way, saying that there's nutrients, although there's mm -hmm. no effect to it. Mm -hmm. And people would just buy it still because it's much cheaper. Oh, this mm -hmm. is also about uh, building a brand, right, for all of mm -hmm. you. Uh, yes. So for Vinny and Gwanwei, especially if you uh, you're new into this to the scene, this is your mm -hmm. first time you're getting into this space. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you build brand? I mean, how do you build awareness is one thing, but building mm -hmm. the credibility and building that the relationship with your potential customers to actually come in and support you. How mm -hmm. how do you go about that process? For me, it's right now, since I'm already in the process of making my own treats for my dogs anyway, I do give them to uh, some friends and I'm in like two to three dog community group chats. They are on WhatsApp, there are like 100 over people on it. So for mm -hmm. me to get to know all these dog parents immediately, it's quite easy already. And I'm constantly bringing my dogs out with all the other dog parents as well. So as uh, like I, I give treats to all dogs, 
So as the dogs eat more, then the parents will be like, oh, what, what treat is this? And I was like, oh, I'm doing this own thing. And then from there, word of mouth. I agree with what you said. Like, it's incredibly difficult, especially with a lot of established yeah. players to build a brand. Right. Right? Right. Um, so, uh, so we just started out. So we, luckily we have a guy that, uh, one of our co-founders, uh, Ing Song, who mm -hmm. is incredible mm -hmm. at like, brand strategy, mm -hmm. branding, mm -hmm. marketing, and all that. Um, mm -hmm. So what we, what we went for was, we wanted to know what's our identity first. Right? Mm -hmm. So our mission, our statement, what, what do we actually stand for? So mm -hmm. ethically, uh, conflict-free. So we want mm -hmm. to be very ethical and yeah. sourcing for Monzonite. We want yeah. to have extremely good customer service. So for example, the bigger brands, um, because they're so big, yes, they do have the branding in place uh, for mm -hmm. their customers, but um, the customer service angle mm -hmm. uh, might be mm -hmm. a bit lacking, I would say, because mm -hmm. for example, the after-sales service that um, the bigger brands can, mm -hmm. can give um, mm -hmm. would, be, would take very long. So if you if you want to clean your rings, for example, mm. it, you send it to them, it might take one to two months for it to mm. ship back and then they, they'll do some quality checks as well. But for yeah. us, because everything is locally sourced, everything is locally made, uh, we can just uh, do, a, do a lot of those like resizing of rings uh, incredibly fast, like one, two days. So that's oh. the angle that we wanted to, okay. um, the u unique selling point that we want to bring across to uh, our customers in Singapore. We want to do more uh, local outreach uh, programs mm -hmm. do things that um, the bigger players cannot do. So talking to more uh, individual uh, couples, educating them on, hey, what's Monster Night? What's, uh, mm -hmm. what's the diamond alternative? Mm -hmm. And the conflict nature of diamonds. So we are trying to do more of those PR, um, like person to person marketing yeah. as well. Okay. So you yeah. know, uh, you're only going to be focusing on engagement rings? Um, so for now, we launched with engagement rings, but we are, we are thinking of doing um, more like ju other jewelry, like fine jewelry, even men's jewelry. I think it's another area that we can look at. Uh, for example, like men's wedding bands. I think a lot of emphasis in the US at least is starting to, to talk more about that. So I think Singapore is always about one or six months behind US. So I think the trend is to talk more about like, hey, men's jewelry, hey, Monsonite. Uh, and then eventually the Singaporeans will be more educated on that and the trend will always sort of like follow mm -hmm. the, the state side, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, right. So okay. in your case, Eddie, you've yeah. got a long reputation in music I mean, as a guitarist. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what do you think would motivate other guitarists to want to grab your Eden uh, okay. model from EMEA? Uh, so we... Um, me, uh, me and uh, Ismail, the, the, the founder of EMEA, we came up with an, an idea where uh, we created this um, uh, so-called like a, a competition. It's called uh, the EMEA Guitar Challenge. Uh, the whole idea is to get uh, people to know the brand first. At the same time, uh, we, we introduce to, 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 to the, the, those who are in the competition uh, about what are, what are the products that we have, what we can do to cater for their needs. And of course, if they, if they win the competition, they will get uh, a customized guitar at the end of it. Okay. So, so the whole idea is to uh, get as many uh, people to be aware of this brand. And uh, surprisingly, most of the, the entry comes from Malaysia. So we are actually quite excited about that. But yeah, okay. because of the COVID situation, right? So we, we don't know how to reach to them. Hopefully all this ends soon and I can do proper promotion uh, things in, in Malaysia. Yeah, Maybe you so. can also offer guitar lessons for those who buy a guitar. Actually, we were, <laughs> true, no, we were, we were thinking about that, especially for the young, uh, for, uh, for, for children, like 12 and below. Yeah, that would be mm. very good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so for all of you then, Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, because I think we all face the same issue, right? Like because of COVID, yeah. it's very hard to yeah, get a lot correct. of outreach campaigns. Correct. So correct. yeah, I, I want to ask Vinny, like how, how do you reach out to like all those like you know mm -hmm. dog parents and all that, yeah. like groups or how, how do you do it? Um yeah. for us it's actually before that there's the different um number of people limitations, right? So usually mm -hmm. either one or two dogs will be mm -hmm. one doctor. Mm -hmm. So whenever we go on walks Definitely for me, other friends walking their dogs. Yeah, true. And we were like, oh, you know, there's this um group chat. Do you want to join mm -hmm. it? 
then we <laughs> just gather in the in the group yeah, yeah, yeah. talking about the <laughs> yeah. Like, love it love it but yeah, it's yeah, small yeah. dog related things so there mm. can be a lost dog there can be like some health issues mm. that needs attention mm. to um and then after that they'll be like okay uh we we're gonna have a doggy stay out uh, mm. whoever that is interested you can just register for it click on the days mm. that you're available and then you just go for it so as as I bring my dogs along for all these different day outs, like hiking mm. to the beach, I get mm. to know more different people from, mm. from around the same vicinity area that mm. I stay as well. So from there, you get to know then bring them to like Tanjong Beach at mm. Sentosa. You meet mm. other dog parents because my dogs run away from me. <laughs> when when <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are able to play, they will go play on their own. And I'll just have to keep an eye on them and other dog parents will be playing with them. So after that, it's like having a little toddler whereby they'll be like, oh, is this your kid? And I was like, yes, this is my yeah. kid. <laughs> then from there, you get to know other dog parents, yeah. Mm-hmm. So oh, also, cool. it's fairly organic, right? Yeah. Uh, you go out and you go to meet people when you can. Mm-hmm. You know, the, I suppose once the uh, restrictions are lifted, it'll be a lot easier. Easier, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, in your case, Gwanwe, if you want to uh, get your engagement rings out there, you need more people to start going out and meeting and socializing and eventually getting the step where they actually are proposed to and then there's an opportunity for your ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, should partner with the like, matrimonial rates and people wanting yeah. to say single going to be an issue for you? <laughs> <laughs> it, it might be, but uh, I think the market out there is still quite large because uh, I think there's about 27,000 marriages in 20... Mm. I would say 2019 now, because 2020 is an off year, right? Because mm-hmm. COVID and everything. And also, we also wanted to target more um, anniversary rings or like a second ring type of thing. Because when we talk to um, people uh, like our parents or older generation, right, we realize that pe- when people buy the engagement ring, they, w- they only buy it for that period of time or that one year. Then after that, they would just take it and put it in the safe and you mm. won't see it for the next 20, 30 years. Yeah. yeah so, uh, of course, because diamonds are so expensive, they, they want to put it in the safe and they want to keep it mm. safe. Uh, so what we wanted to offer or uh, another another angle they wanted to, to give was a second ring. So they don't need to hide the rings anymore. They don't need to put it mm-hmm. anywhere because most night is relatively cheap compared to diamonds. Mm-hmm. They can just wear it out uh, without any fear. And because our warranty and the guarantees that we give um, is quite strong, the lifetime guarantee. Um, so we can, we can, in a sense, uh, protect them for any like scratches, damages that they might receive on the ring mm-hmm. or the gem. I wanted to get to the, um, for, for you, uh, Guanwei, it, it's three of you coming together. How did you structure your, your relationship with each other so that you don't have issues down the line? Yeah, so um, it's more, yeah, working co-founders sometimes, yeah, like you say, can be an issue, right? Especially if there's not enough communication, I would say. Um, so that's what we're that usually doing. an issue when you're either doing very well or you're not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. So, so that's so, when all the problems will start. Yeah. Yeah, we wanted to di- to divide the to divide the division of labor. Uh, whatever you are good at, you focus on that, and then that is that's what you're in charge of. In terms of yeah. the the foundation of the company, I mean the shareholding. Where did you get yeah. your startup funding, for instance, and and oh. what are your plans in that regard in terms of recouping or building or you know strategizing? Yeah, so um, the reason why we started with uh, engagement and once night is because we wanted something that um, has lower capital base. So that's why we don't have any retail outlets. We do everything online. So on the capital raising aspect, we all are bootstrapped. So we all self funded uh, for this thing, and. For the next future plans, we don't see that we need a lot of uh, influx of cash right now. So that's why we haven't went out to find like, uh, hey, is anyone interested in investing? Uh, so that so another as another way for us to do it is um, SMU has this grant called like IIE grant. Uh, so it's for startup founders who are affiliated with SMU. So they have an accelerator program. If you join the program and you get approved. You can get, I think, about ten thousand dollars extra. Mm-hmm. So uh, we we are trying to go for that as well. And what does SMU get in return for that? Um, I think they are just trying to uh, foster entrepreneurship, and that's that's I think their their core mandate for IIE. So they don't take a stake in it. No, they don't. So it's just a grant. That's why. Okay. And you need to repay that, or? Um, no, you don't. Uh, you need hit certain milestones. 
Uh, and then after that, you don't. Uh, there's another interesting thing if other people want to find out. Um, it's called the SG Startup Grant. I believe it's fifty thousand dollars from yeah from the government mm. itself. So that one yeah. also has no equity at all. Oh. So if any anyone wants to find out more, startup. you can just go to yeah Ooh. SG startup. SG startup Founders Grant. Uh, yeah, startup. It's a startup grant fifty thousand dollars. In your approach, you would need to see whether this is something people want. Can you afford mm. to do it? And as a result. How do you then push it out there? Right. So, Vinny, what was it like for you? How did you test it? And uh... I do, I, I do test it. So, um, I'm also kind of like learning from a doggy daycare, like how how they run and doing the dog trainer thing, right? So, actually, that is the best testing ground for me, whereby I feed the dogs. Mm. So, if they eat it, like the number of dogs that would accept the treat more, then I know it definitely this so would do good. Like. Um, if I compare a beef jerky treat comparing to a sweet potato ones, right? Mm. Beef one usually gets more attention. Mm. So, because it, it's meat based still, and mm. so the dogs would just keep hovering around me. So, I mm. know that this treat <laughs> works well. So, whenever mm. I bring the sweet potato treat and the dogs don't hover me, then <laughs> it doesn't work. So, whichever um, treat. So would a vegan owner have I certain positions? <laughs> Sorry? Would a vegan dog owner have certain impositions that they place on their own pet? Like, yeah, my pet should be a vegan as well. Or I, I've meat. heard of that, actually. I, I've met um, vegetarian owners that only give the dog vegetarian diet, vegan mm. owners that only give the dogs vegan diet. So they do give additional um, supplements to it. Uh, but I, to be honest, I don't really know how that works because... Mm. For my dogs, I don't feed them kibbles or, or what. I, I give them like raw food. So anything mm -hmm. that I buy from the market, clean it and just give it to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How big do you yeah. want your enterprise to grow into? How big do you want it to be? Wow. As, as big as possible. <laughs> I guess, like, um, my plans are actually, if, if it starts off well here in, in Singapore, mm -hmm. then definitely I'll bring it over to Malaysia as well. Because... Um, the current situation for Singaporeans is that they are getting to know more importance of how uh, nutrition of pets is. And they start doing a lot of like physiotherapy, acupuncture, massages, mm -hmm. wow. swimming classes for all the dogs wow. to extend their lives. Because to be honest, each dog's lifespan is between like 10 to 15 or 16 years, right? So whenever mm -hmm. uh, your love for babies, they pass away, it's really heartbreaking. So a lot of pet parents were trying to do a lot of different things to extend the life of our, our fur babies. So how, how are we going to do that then? Then in Malaysia, it's also starting off right now. So there's more players with regards to raw food and more uh, awareness on how raw food is much better or home-cooked food is much better comparing to kibbles or packed food, like canned mm. food. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh. Guanwei, how about you? How how do you test uh, your market potentials? Yeah, so that's a very interesting question, especially for e-commerce players. Um, so what we did was before we launched, uh, we actually tried to test the idea through Facebook ads. So we did a lot of Facebook ads testing, see whether there's any interest at all. That is there any are there people clicking through to know what's what's most nice, know more about engagement rings or actually buying engagement rings online in general. So through like one to two weeks of testing, we realized, hey, okay, there's a viable market because people are clicking through the ads, people are landing on our page, page. people are signing up for our, our pre-launch email list. So they gave us the confidence of, hey, okay, there's this traction that we have, these people are interested in, let's try to launch it as fast as possible, capture the market right now. So that's how we sort of went about to try to test, test the market. Mm -hmm. And were the responses largely from Singapore or did you control your ad, uh, your geographic yeah. reach of your ad? Yeah, so we only targeted Singapore because we wanted to know whether there's a local market first. Everything, everything stands for the local market, I feel, uh, because our, jewelers, uh, our, our jeweler is based in Singapore. So we think that we can get, get, the, get the engagement rings to our customers a lot faster in Singapore. So that's what we went for first. Okay. And Eddie, for your guitars, yes. yeah. you have a long queue of uh, potential guitarists lining up for your Eden brand. Ah, yes, so Eden. far, um, uh, the Eden model, um, what we did, um, like, uh, like you were saying about uh, getting the outreach, right? We, we actually got um, 
by by chance we got a good friend who is a very senior uh, guitarist in Malaysia. Uh, he plays for the likes of M Nasi, Ella, all these uh, big artists. So we we went ahead and took the plunge, made him a guitar that is specific to his needs, and by that by by doing that we we kind of like uh, got to reach out to a lot of uh, new generations. So we we are now hoping to actually grow the brand even bigger if uh, with a little bit of luck or a lot of luck <laughs> that we need. But yeah, that's, that's how we do it. Yeah. So how much of a... You're already a very good guitarist. I'm Excellent. Still I'm no, no, how sorry. much better could you be with uh, your own customized guitar? Uh, basically... It's, it really depends on uh, individuals. Uh, so for me, uh, a good guitar means like um, uh, in terms of uh, musicality, it should uh, vibrate and it, the sustain is there. And on, on, for my, personally, for me, it shouldn't be heavy, you know, because we are, we are performing it um, standing up most of the time. It, it has to be uh, ergonomically comfortable, you know, so that's that's how I came out with the Eden uh, model, Eden range. So I we really look into all these things. Yeah. So you you will become uh, faster with your faster. guitar work, uh, <laughs> more accurate. No, no, I'm just trying to understand how <laughs> yeah. that uh, customization translates into okay. your performance. For for the guitar, right? The the most important thing, or where the focal point is, is usually the neck. Where the string meets the 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 fretboard of the guitar, Fret, yeah. and uh, really, it's all about if if you you try playing guitar. Some guitars are really hard, you know, like uh, children uh, when they just started out. Um, most of the time in the eighties or seventies, they are they, the technology wasn't there yet to to build something that is comfortable for kids. But nowadays, uh, people are more aware of the tension of the strings the size of the guitar, how it's going to be played, like sit, sitting down or standing up. So these are the things that um, will definitely help uh, the playability. And when the play, playability is good, uh, you will definitely um, have a shorter span of like, uh, you don't have to spend too much time to get better. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay. So it's very important. Yeah. So for all of you, yeah. I mean, you're all yeah. starting up new, new mm. endeavors, new ventures. Are you, it might be early days yet, but are you doing this with the purpose of growing it or to, to, to attract other parties to consolidate with you or to sell? What what's the strategy when uh, that you had in mind when you when you started this up? Wow. One way. Yeah, so when three of us came together to talk about it, um, it was more of a sort of a side project that we, we wanted to, to do. Um, but as as we went on, like the traction, as, as we get more traction, as we see, like, hey, actually, this data, the metrics uh, from our website, the metrics from our Facebook ads are increasing, we thought, like, it's quite an interesting angle to go with. So growing it will be quite fun as well. So I think that that's what we all, all thought about. Mm -hmm. We didn't think about uh, like you know, trying to sell it or mm -hmm. exiting or anything like that. Uh, for now, we are just focused on growing what growing, um, growing Monzonite engagement rings in Singapore, educating mm -hmm. the public about it. And we'll just see when we reach there. Uh, we don't really mm -hmm. think about mm -hmm. like, hey, okay. what's so, the... So do you, do you set point? yourself uh, uh, timelines? You know, uh, at this time, we will revisit and address mm. this issue about the business. Yep. Do you do that? So, yeah, we, we did talk about it at the start. So I think that's very important as well, like uh, like you mentioned, to have goals, right? Um, so we wanted to have uh, at least a, uh, end of, until end of the year um, before we make any judgment of where, where the business will go or where will we end up with this. So we gave ourselves a good like, eight months to see um, yeah, just to see the see where the business will end up, uh, see whether the traction is there, see whether there's any pivot that needs to be done, or if this was an interesting side project that we did, we all learn a lot and we all just um, continue on. Yep. 
And Vinny, how about yourself? I mean, yours is your own, or do you have partners in this? Um, mine is actually my own. So I'm doing it mm. out of interest and out of passion. So definitely, if I can grow it, I'll, I'll grow it more. And um, by doing this first, it's actually a first step for uh, the exposure of the brand after that. Mm -hmm. Then ultimately, what I want to do is also for like um, tour groups, for dog mm. owners to go together mm. with the dogs. Mm. And then eventually, maybe like a uh, NGO thing whereby, because right now everyone is getting dogs as a mm -hmm. play buddy. Yeah. But I believe when, when people start traveling again, a lot of these dogs would be abandoned or like some of them may have it for one year or one mm -hmm. half a year and yeah. they find out that yeah. dogs is actually not part of their lifestyle and they'll give up the, the pup. So what's going to happen with the dog then? Then I'm thinking to consolidate all these dogs mm -hmm. then i'll retrain them and then um let people like so-called rent the mm -hmm. dog to to see how oh. the experience is for two mm -hmm. months so they know that if they are suited to have a dog or not so mm -hmm. if they're not suited within that few months they can return the dog definitely but if they are suited then it's 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 a even better yeah. situation for the dog oh. it gets it rather traumatic for the dog i mean to be it's like being often many times yeah. over, isn't it? Yeah. To be rented out as a... It's as a sad for the dogs, but um, a lot of dogs, they actually enjoy yeah. human interaction. Yeah. They, they may be sad for a while while they are being orphaned, yeah. but um, if they find a loving family that loves them a lot, yeah. it's, it's going to be better for them as compared to being abandoned on the streets for the rest of their lives. Yeah, yeah. true, true. So, Eddie, for, uh, yeah. for Emmy uh, and, yeah. and your Eden range, yeah. is it a one-off? Are you looking to eventually expand the, the yeah. Eden range within the Emmy brand? Definitely, it's going to uh, extend the, the, the uh, Eden range. And um, it, it all started with uh, the passion for the guitar and also uh, my personal needs of uh, building a customized guitar. So definitely, uh, my dream, uh, in fact, for me and uh, Mr. Ismail is to grow the brand and extend. So is a passion as possible. being converted yeah. into a business as well for you, for yourself? In a, in a way, uh, personally, for me, yes. Yeah, so it's, okay. it's like um, I took the opportunity because of COVID and everything. So uh, start drawing and, you know, come out with designs. Uh, this, this will only be the first part. Uh, there will be a few other models that will be coming up soon. Okay. So yeah, hopefully everything, let's everybody, I'm sure we all hope that this COVID thing will just pass and everybody can move on, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you guys have an exit strategy in the event it doesn't work out? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you, you don't, okay. Uh, don't <laughs> really? um, I mean, exit strategy, uh, yeah. not like we thought of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but at some point, I mean, what would make mm. you want to say, okay, this doesn't work? Is it just sheer numbers uh, or, you know, inability yeah. to get resources? I, I think we, yeah, so, so like you said, it's the numbers, right? The metrics and the statistics, mm. like, oh, if, if not getting traction from somewhere, maybe you're doing it wrong or maybe, uh, like, for example, myself, if we don't sell, sell, like, anything at all in eight months or one year, uh, then of course uh, we need to, to be realistic about it and we will see the numbers and judge from there, right? Mm -hmm. So I, like you said, uh, the, the metrics are very important, the statistics are very important. And I think being real with yourself is also important, mm -hmm. especially for mm -hmm. business owners. Mm -hmm. For me, it will be more so of like, if it doesn't match with my sales forecast uh, for the conservative, uh, conservative um, method that I'm doing, then there's no way that I would I would carry forward even if I do more aggressive marketing, right? And it still doesn't even hit the sales targets for uh whatever that I predicted for a lower rate, then yes. there's actually no point for me to continue. You're doing this as a sideline activity. And at which point do you think this sideline activity would be meaningful enough to be a full-time endeavor? Everything goes well and, and of orders coming in and also with the whole um what my ultimate goal for ngo thing ha do happen then definitely i'll have to stop whatever that i'm doing as a day job right now and pursue mm -hmm. that but if not then definitely doing what my day job is is also like it's also part of my passion and i do enjoy what i'm mm -hmm. doing um mm -hmm. 
yeah, so it will be a dilemma when the time comes. But I guess mm. uh, doing what you like and mm -hmm. what you enjoy is the most important. So just, I, I guess, when it comes, it comes. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sanri, you were going to say something? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I recently graduated for SMU, so I'm still doing this full time. Um, okay. Yeah, so for, but what for if, now. what uh, an offer for a job comes? Um, so I haven't really looked for a job yet. So uh, I'm just doing this full time and see where it goes. Uh. So, so like, do, you, do you think you're an entrepreneur more than a worker? Um, I mean, I guess so. If <laughs> if you want to put like buckets, right? I think mm. uh, it's it's multifaceted, right? For being an entrepreneur, uh, you're a solo worker in the company mm. as well. If you, you start mm. a company yourself, so you, you do still need to be a good worker, or you need mm. to work with, um, like for example, myself. I mm. have three co-founders. We mm. all have to be individually good at our own work mm -hmm. to be able to be good at to to be able to like grow the company or take it where we want it to go. So in that aspect, I say. Yes, we are entrepreneurs and we are also workers in the same sense. Mm -hmm. I hope uh, the three of us, we really just carry on doing what we like because uh, I'm sure this is the base of our passion. And um, uh, and of course, let's hope everything goes back to normal. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more opportunities after this because it's like a bubble, right? Everybody is just, um, at this moment, everybody is tight. So it once everything is open, I think it'll just be an explosion of something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I feel uh, personally. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, it's happening to see all of you sort of chasing your own yeah. dreams and desires yeah. and opportunities that have come up. And yeah. I hope that you know you take it as far as you can. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you will take it as far as you can, but I also hope that the opportunity to grow it much bigger than you expected yeah. uh, presents yeah. itself. Yeah.